Wahidu Ji Ka Khalsa, Wahidu Ji Ki Fatih. Welcome everyone to this, uh, the second presentation of this two uh, part talks. So, just as part of a bit of a recap um, from last week. So, we considered the events of 1984 uh, within this wider context of the, this Indo Sikh war that we looked at, which began in 1947. So, we looked at the lies and the deception upon which the Indian constitution was written and how India was created. Uh, we looked at the subjugation throughout the 1950s. Did the honorary Punjab the Bondi Koshis Kitizi? We looked at the attack on the Barsai in 1955. And then we considered how they continued that policy, the anti Sikh, anti Punjab policy, where Punjab, Punjab was further split in the 1960s, and then the attacks on Sikh identity and our salute. We considered the Nirankari Sakha of, of 1978 and the indiscriminate firing, which then began on the Sikh uh, as well. And we concluded with the 1980s and the uh, rise of Santi Nelsinji and the Talibud Morta. So we're going to pick up from there and then today we'll continue with the, um, the Battle of Amritsar and then what happens afterwards. So early 1980s, by this time there had been 26 attempts from the Akali Dal to resolve the issues of Punjab in a diplomatic manner. Um, and each time they made those attempts, the Indian government, they just continued with their anti-Sikh policy. So those, those attempts, they, they just weren't working. Um, and despite the onslaught of the fact that they'd already started firing from the Sikh, um, the economy that was still trying, but none, none of it was working. So they just continued with their anti-Sikh policy. Last week we considered how Gurbachana, who was the head of the Nirankari cult, how he was taken out by the Sikhs. A year or so later, another guy called Lala Jagat Naren, he too was then taken out because he was siding with the likes of Gurbachana. Uh, he actually went to court to defend them as well. Uh, so he too then is taken out. So what happens is, as, as a result of, of him being uh, taken out, uh, following his death, uh, Hindu mobs, they start attacking Sikh shops. And Sant Dimnelsinji is made the primary suspect. Now, so then what the police do is they, they seek to arrest him. Now, at the time of, of uh, Naren's killing, Sant was actually in Haryana being Parchar. So what the police do is 500 officers they surround the village where he was doing Parchar. But by the time they get there, Santi had already left Haryana. So what they start doing is they then turn their attention to the Sikhs and they ransack and loot Sikh houses. And they also set fire to two buses belonging to the Taksal. Now those, those buses contained salutes of Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj. They don't know what they are doing, but they don't know So they then, it's indefensible for a Sikh. So they protested and the police then uh, lucky charged um, the, the protesters. Santi was then eventually arrested from Metta Chong. And um, as he's being arrested, uh, Santi, because he didn't really see himself as a citizen of India, he saw himself more as that India was this foreign power and he was trying to detain him. So when he's arrested, he uh, he says to the Sings, Ke singo meri tari da ki because he'd already began the awakening and he was telling them, look, we're slaves in India. And his arrest it was proof of that in many ways. So he says to them, what are you now going to do? So when Santi's arrested, in that 25 day, day period, there's 80 incidents between the Sikh and the police. Police, uh, Punjab is up in arms. And so then the police are then forced to release Santi Nelsinji because of what is happening in Punjab and the fact that there was there was no evidence against him. Now when Santi um, is, uh, is released, he just, he just picks up with his Bindabin Prachar, he continues with his mission of uh, reawakening uh, the Sikh as he was doing just before. 1982. By this stage, the Indian government and the Indian police had started to target Gursikhs, Redwan and Nitnevi Gursik, who were coming into the fold, who were joining the movement that Santi was create, had created by this stage. 
And what they had done was they had created a list of targets. And one such name was Gulwant Singh Nalboke. Now, Faisal used to work on his uh, family's fields as a farmer. One day, Faisal was returning home from work in the fields and he was picked up by the police. He's taken into police custody um, and he's brutally tortured. He's brutally beaten and what they actually said was that he was arrested on the, the 4th of June. The actual fact that he been picked up seven days before, which allowed him that week or so to just brutally torture him. He was, he was beaten so badly that he was una they were able, unable to take him to court. So the court then allowed further three or four days to the police. Again, they just, they just beat him mercilessly. What they then do is on the 10th of um, June, they released a statement to say that Faisal had, released, uh, had uh, escaped uh, police custody. And the following day, Faisal's body is uh, found dead, uh, covered in blood near a river. Uh, he escaped, uh, we tracked him down, he shot at us, and then we killed him. When in actual fact, Faisal was, was killed in police custody. And Faisal then becomes the first case of the tens of thousands that were killed in this way in fake encounters. And we'll come into that a little later on in terms of what happens. Uh, this kind of policy against the sick then continues. So, the conflict just continues to escalate. Um, this is a quote before we go into the battle itself. So, I just stayed. Um, from its beginnings until uh, 1984, it continued getting more and more support from all sections of the Sikh community. From the start of the Morta, the Dharmiyud Morta, till now, about 20% of the total Sikh population had caught in arrest and 200 Sikh had lost their lives. Many of them shot dead. When believe, this was, so this was by, just before 84. This is written by G.S. Dillon in The Truth About Punjab, SGPC white paper. 1996. It's worth reading. It's a really big paper, but it's worth reading because it gives all the statistics. It breaks it down really well. So let's begin uh, with the battle itself. Also, by by the late kind of by late 82, we now know that they had been planning the battle for 18 months before. So around about that time, on the one hand, they're telling the Khalida that we'll, we'll resolve the issues. But Inda has already given the order for them to create a replica model in the Dune Valley, and they're already carrying out uh, training drills on the replica model of the Barsa. So that planning, which they had been um, looking at and doing for the past 18 months, on the 1st of June, is then put into motion. And their aim was to, to crush six, six, the Sikh spirit and our culture the Sikhi that was flourishing within the Baal side and through the efforts of Samtar and Elsinji. Over 150,000 troops are positioned within Punjab, within Amun side, and 75,000 are positioned directly on, outside of the Baal side. On the first day, the Singhs were under strict orders from General Shabek Singh that not to fire first, and that was a strategic move so that they didn't reveal their positions within the Baal side. So what the Indian Army do from the outside is they just start firing indiscriminately and they start firing towards Harmandar Sahib and the six civilians. As a result of that, Bhai Mehta Singh Babar then stands up and he fights back. Bhai Sahib then becomes the first Shaheed of the Battle of Amritsar. But in many ways you know, he exemplifies the spirit of Sikh resistance which then continues by the other, the other fighters. June 2nd. So what they now do is they allow Sikhs to enter the Dabar side. Do you know what they said? Because if you remember, this is also the time of Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj's Shahidi. So Sikh Kanye Dal Te, the Dabar side, John Aisi. So they allow them in, they open up the checkpoints, and as soon as they let in, they close the checkpoints. In many ways, the Sikh are then trapped inside the Dabar side, and it tells you something about what their intentions were. The Antim Sanskar uh, of Paisa then takes place inside the Dabar Sahib and you have um, Sikh, Jajari Jatibadya, um, across the board, they all come together and they partake in the Adas and, and the Sikhs are then immersed in Gurbani 
and the, the call cell fudge are then regroup within the bar site. The Indian Army also, they also secure the border with Pakistan because they're fearing that this could escalate. So from the top of Punjab right down to the tip of Rajasthan, the entire border is then sealed uh, as well. And this is when Indian generals such as um, Ibrar say that they'll have the job done within, within two hours. So then, 3rd of June, the hate fortifications within, within the Dabasa have taken place. The Tiari is, is complete from the sit within. Uh, and the Khalsa forge inside, they knew that the attack was imminent, so they positioned themselves around the, the bar side strategically. So you have Singh's uh, fighters at Darshini Diori, uh, Rambriya Bungay, Aranda Parkarma, and then you have Sam Jarnel and um, General Shabek Singh with, from inside the Khal at the headquarters. And then the battle commences. Uh, and straight away the Indians come under heavy fire. As soon as they attempt to enter the Pakalma, such as the strategic planning of General Shabek Singh, they were unable to get in. There's an account given by uh, General Jamwal. It's on YouTube, and it came out in 2015. And what he says is that, as soon as I would send my soldiers forward, when I send them forward, they, a bullet would come in, and we don't know where it was coming from, and they would be on the floor. Such was the strategic setup from the Sings that they just didn't know what to do. They were so underprepared at this stage. Again, because it's escalating and it's gone beyond what they thought um, it would be, they then close and suspend air rail and uh, road transports um, coming into the bar site. Media blackout is also called, and then the rest of Punjab, Punjab is then sealed off from the rest of the world. 4th of June, you now have pitched battles going on around the Pakarma. But again, the Indian forces, they're unable to breach the Sikh defences. So frustrated, the generals now give the order to use chemical warfare. So you have gas canisters, which are then fired towards the Gal Takht, Dashni Diori, and Hermanda Saika. Because their thinking was that we could maybe try and knock the soldiers out, and then when they you know, go unconscious, we'll then enter and kill them. But they, hold, they held their, res their resolve and that didn't work. So at this stage you've got all three wings of the, of the armed forces within uh, the past. So you've got the Air Force, because they've already used helicopter gunships to deploy troops from the ground as well, uh, from the air as well. You've got the Navy and you've got the Army as well. All seven divisions. They also then, at this stage, they position the tanks um, and they also then start attacking the Ram Ria Bunke as well because the things are in you know, the, the vantage points in the Rangriya Bunge, and they realize this, so they start then directing their attack towards the Bunge as well. The heavy shelling then continues on the, on the 5th of June, and 70, up to 74 other Gurdwari are then attacked as well across Punjab. And I've got a, a larger map in just a second uh, diagram, but another assault is then began from the north entrance. Um, but each time again, they try. Those who do get through the Parkarma do not get the, do not get anywhere close to the Gal Takht. They just they just mowed down by the Sips who are inside. Such as the, the fierce resistance from them. So on the on the sixth of June, at this stage, the Sikh they they're winning the battle, um, and this is now when they bring in an armored personnel carrier. It's not as big as a tank, it's a little bit more agile. They bring down to the Pakarma. Um, and as it's making its way around the Baba Deep Singh Shahidi Memorial, that's there, an RPG, rocket propelled grenade, is fired from the Gal Duck from the Sings, and they immobilize the tracks of the APC so they can't get any further. And you hear Jagada being run around, around the bar side. So again, at this stage, they're, they're winning, they're just not able to get, get through the sick defenses. And they've run out of ideas. They've tried all their divisions, they've brought in reinforcements, they've tried the chemical warfare as well. So now this is now when they make the call to Delhi and they say, look, we need to use the tanks. There's tens of thousands 
of Indian forces trying to get in. And inside, from our own accounts, we know there's between 175 and 200 Sikh who are fighting. We also know they've had elite training from the British SAS. That news came out a few years ago in 2014. They were the best of the best. Despite that, they're still unable to breach the Sikh defences. So they asked for, for permission of the, the battle tanks, um, and as we know, on the 6th, they then bombard the Akal Takht. This is the image I was talking about, you can have a little read of that. Now, now this, the account that I've given you thus far is what I know of, what I've read of from the generals, and from those independent sources. But the we do have some accounts. Jenny Gritham Singh, who was the head Granthi of the Akal Takht, and other eyewitnesses who were able to survive the attack have written as well. And there's one account given by a Sevada of the Bar Sahib called um, Hari Singh. The Hari, Sahib, uh, Hari Singh Salud Das, they say that in the Akal there was a room called Kotha Sahib, which is where they would take Guru Granth Sahib before Sukhasan, the Sukhasan of Allah Mundasi. They say that they are there with 30, about 25, 30 other Sikh. And he says that She Junu Swedu Tarke Paisa Pai Mixam on the Nikamri the Vich. They can the Lake Hun Shehidia on the Samaha Yaya. That we, we can't now withhold the, the battle tanks. We, we've kept the resistance up. We can't keep this going any longer. They will all dust the Lake Unoto Bar Magrohi Sun Jernels in the on the day. They can the Santana Kipta Jola Paiva, Kamakasa Baneva. Gamrich Palla, Hatrich Teer. The Dasdene Santere Teer Ote Rakasi Jete Shezade the Shasta Pesa Urepe Murdia the AK forty seven Rakke A car tak the Doko Samajate, Midi Pir Dole Shansa to there. Uran Mokrak the way Santana Daskiti, Ardas to Oprant, Santane the Nal, the Una de Nal, the Lardesan, Uran Epe Juj Keshahad Tajampita. That's how he describes it. And there's so much in that in that final stand, so much Sikhi in that. You know, we look towards Battle of Tumkar and the Battle of Muksar Sahib. All the jungle that, you know, that we've had throughout at the house. And that's how he describes what's going on inside the Bar Sahib, inside the Bar at that time. We, we retain that, we preserve that. That response that Santi then gives at that time. You know, in, in Bani as well, uh, that the stories of our ancestors is what will then inspire the next generation. So we really need to preserve that, and when we retell the events of 1984, we tell them from that perspective how they actually fought in the end as well. Basically, how they were about the case that 1947 led to the Jirazum Kendra Sarkar's decision to close the Sikh Academy. The Bharat has been doing this for many years. They have tried to bring the Bharat back to the Bharat. And if we look at this, you know, if we look at this, we look at this, we look at this, we look at this, in the 18th century, Mughal government had also had the same policy. There were also four wars in the Bharat. One was the same war, and then there were three wars in the Bharat. There were also three wars in the Bharat. There were also three wars in the Bharat. So, what is the reason why is it that for centuries, Sadiyatollah, हरेक हो कम होती है नीति बनिया एक पॉलिसी बनिया कि अरे हम खानु खत्म करना है व्हाई इस दा जब आप गुरु से तांत्रिक देखिए ते गुरु साहिब सामुफर मांदे ने ताकत तब है ताकत के लाये के वो ही जीवन ताकत ते बैठना चाहिए तो जरा जरा ताकत बैठने दे लाये होगे फिर अगली पंक्ति देवेच गुरु साहिब सामुफर म गुर मत पाए कि जे जीव ने अपने अंदर ले पांच चोर संभाल के काम प्रोत लोग उनका गुर मत अनसार वो ही कहता है कि बैठने लायक बन रहा है ऐसा भी ये सिख फालसा नहीं है सो ऐतिहासिक ऐतिहासिक सवाल पे तो होना है कि कि इंदिरा गांधी ताकत बैठने लायक सी 
ਕਿ ਉਹਦਾ ਪੇ ਜਵਾਹਰ ਲਾਲ ਨਹਿਰੂ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਤੱਕ ਬੈਠੇ ਜਿੰਨੇ ਵੀ 1947 ਤੋਂ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਦੇ ਪ੍ਰਧਾਨ ਮੰਤਰੀ ਹੋਏ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਜੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਗੁਰੂ ਅਨੁਸਾਰ ਦੇਖੀਏ ਕੌਣ ਤੱਕ ਬੈਠਣ ਦੇ ਲਾਇਕ ਸਨ ਸੋ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸਾਡੀ ਸਿੱਧੀ ਲੜਾਈ ਕੇਂਦਰ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਨਾਲ ਉਦੋਂ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਹੋ ਗਈ ਸੀ ਜਦੋਂ ਗੁਰੂ ਨਾਨਕ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੇ ਇੱਕ ਓਂਕਾਰ ਦਾ ਸ਼ਬਦ ਵਰਤਿਆ ਸੀ ਦਸ ਦਸ ਦਾ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਟ ਰੈਜ਼ਿਸਟੈਂਸ ਦਾ ਵੀ ਹੈ ਯੂ ਲੁੱਕ ਐਟ ਆਵਰ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਐਂਡ ਫਰਮ ਯੂ نو ਫਰਮ ਫਰ ਦਾ 15th ਸੈਂਚਰੀ ਅਪ ਟੂ ਨਾਓ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਆਲਵੇਸ ਹੈਡ ਦਾ ਓਪੋਜੀਸ਼ਨ ਵਿਦ ਦਾ ਸੈਂਟਰ ਤਰੀ ਤਾਂ ਇਹ ਬਾਰ ਬਾਰ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਉੱਤੇ ਹਮਲਾ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਰੂਪ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਉੱਪਰ ਹਮਲਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਦੀ ਪਾਰ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਅੰਗ ਅੰਗ ਕਦੀ ਸਾਰ ਕੇ ਖੂਹ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਿੱਟ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਦੇ ਅੰਡਰਸਟੈਂਡ ਦਾ ਬਿਆਰ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਚੀ ਆਫ ਦਾ ਗੁਰੂ ਇਜ਼ ਮੋਰ ਇਨਸਪਾਇਰਸ ਦ ਸਿੱਖ ਸੋ ਦੀ ਅਟੈਕਸ ਟੇਕ ਪਲੇਸ ਅਗੇਂਸਟ ਦ ਸਿੱਖ ਅਪਨ ਦ ਅਪਨ ਦ ਬੋਡੀਸ ਆਫ ਦ ਸਿੱਖ ਐਂਡ ਆਲਸੋ ਦੇ ਆਰ ਯੂਰ ਜੀ ਵੇਅਰ ਦੇ ਸੋਰਸ ਆਫ ਪਾਵਰ ਗੁਰੂਆਂ ਗੁਰੂਆਂ ਦੀ ਸਿੱਖੀ ਨੇ ਜ਼ਾਲਮ ਹਕੂਮਤ ਦੇ ਬ੍ਰਾਹਮਣਵਾਦ ਦੀਆਂ ਜੜਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਉਦੋਂ ਹੀ ਹਿਲਾ ਕੇ ਰੱਖ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਸੀ ਐਂਡ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਲੁੱਕ ਟੂਵਰਡਸ ਗੁਰੂ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਗੁਰੂਆਂ ਨੇ ਉਦੋਂ ਵੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਲਲਕਾਰਿਆ ਸੀ ਦੋ ਵਾਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੇ ਸ਼ਹੀਦ ਕਰ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਕਿੰਨੀਆਂ ਜੰਗ ਲੜੀਆਂ ਗੁਰੂ ਹਰਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਪਾਤਸ਼ਾਹ ਨੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਉਪਰੰਤ ਵੀ ਜੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਦੇਖੀਏ ਦਸਵੀਂ ਰੂਪ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੋਂ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਪਾਤਸ਼ਾਹ ਆਉਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਤੇ 1600 ਮੇਦੀ ਵਿਸਾਖੀ ਨੂੰ ਖਾਸ ਖਾਸ ਨੂੰ ਸਥਾਪਦੇ ਨੇ ਉਹੀ ਜਰਾ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਕੱਢ ਕੇ ਉਜਰੇ ਹੋਏ ਦਰਖਤ ਵਾਂਗੂ ਧਰਤੀ ਤੇ ਸੁੱਤ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਬੰਦਾ ਸਿੰਘ ਬਹਾਦਰ ਰਾਹੀ ਸੋ ਇਸ ਦਾ ਕੰਟੀਨਿਊਏਸ਼ਨ ਅਗੇਨ ਤਾਂ ਗੁਰੂ ਨੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਸਿੱਖਿਆ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਸੀ ਟੂ ਫਾਈਟ ਟੂ ਫਾਈਟ ਦ ਇਨਜਸਟ ਦ ਅਨਜਸਟ ਰੂਲ ਐਂਡ ਦ ਇਨਜਸਟਿਸ ਸੋ ਜੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਇਸ ਨਜ਼ਰੀਏ ਤੋਂ ਦੇਖੀਏ ਗੁਰੂ ਪ੍ਰਤੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਿਧਾਂਤ ਨੂੰ ਮੁਖ ਰੱਖਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਗੁਰੂ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਨੂੰ ਮੁਖ ਰੱਖਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਫਿਰ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸਵਾਲ ਪੁੱਛਦੇ ਆ ਕਿ ਉੱਥੇ ਕਿਉਂ ਹਥਿਆਰ ਰੱਖੇ ਸਨ ਕਿਉਂ ਉੱਥੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਕਿਉਂ ਉੱਥੋਂ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਸੰਤ ਨਿਆਂ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਲੜੇ ਸਨ ਇਹ ਫਿਰ ਸਵਾਲ ਪੈਦਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਜੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਗੁਰੂ ਪ੍ਰਤੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਿੱਖ ਅਸੂਲਾਂ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਦੇਖਿਆ ਸੋ ਕਿਉਂ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਉਹੀ ਉਹੀ ਰੋਹਾਨੀ ਤਾਕਤ ਉਹੀ ਆਤਮਿਕ ਬਲ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਉਸ ਸਮੇਂ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੇ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਦੇ ਹਿਰਦੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਾਇਆ ਸੀ ਉਹੀ ਫਿਰ 1984 ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹੀ ਸ਼ਕਤੀ ਚੱਲਦੀ ਸੀ ਸੋ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਰਿਸਪੌਂਸ ਸੰਤਾਂ ਨੇ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਸੀ 1984 ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਹੀ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਨੇ ਰਿਸਪੌਂਸ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਮੇਰੇ ਹਿਸਾਬ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਉਹ 18ਵੀਂ ਸਦੀ ਦੇ ਜਿੰਨੇ ਵੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਿੱਖ ਜਰਨੈਲ ਹੋਏ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਘੱਟ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਬਰਾਬਰੀ ਸੀ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਉਹੀ ਰੋਹਾਨੀ ਤਾਕਤ ਦਾ ਸੇਮ ਸੋਰਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਵੀ ਲੁੱਕ ਐਟ ਹਾਊ ਦੇ ਦ ਫਾਈਨਲ ਸਟੈਂਡ ਇਜ਼ ਮੇਡ ਤੇ 1986 ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ 1986 ਸਮਰ ਕੋਟ ਜਸ ਦਾ ਸੈਕਿੰਡ ਉਦੋਂ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹਥਿਆਰ ਬੰਦ ਸੰਘਰਸ਼ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਨੇ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀ ਆਪਣੇ ਪਿੰਡੇ ਹਿਲਾਇਆ ਸੀ ਪੂਰਾ ਕੌਮੀ ਸੰਘਰਸ਼ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਪ੍ਰਤੀ ਜਪ ਦੇਖਿਆ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਅਧੀਨ ਗੁਰੂ ਦੇ ਅਧੀਨ ਕੀਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਸੀ ਇਹ ਉਦੋਂ ਵੀ ਪੁੱਛਿਆ ਗਿਆ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕਿਉਂ ਲੜਦੇ ਹੋ ਕਿਉਂ ਹਥਿਆਰ ਬੰਦ ਸੰਘਰਸ਼ ਚੁੱਕਿਆ ਆ ਤੇ ਭਾਈ ਜਗਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਤੂਫਾਨ ਨੇ ਕੀ ਜਵਾਬ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਸੀ ਮੁਖੀ ਖਾਲੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਵਿਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਫੋਰਸ ਹੈ ਉ
This is also now when they burn the, um, the sick reference library. All of our you know, history and culture was there as well. So just be like, this is what we're going to go get a few handfuls. We're going to get a few handfuls. Why did they then turn to, after the battle had finished, then turn and blow and set fire to the sick reference library? Like I said, they ran up the prisoners. These prisoners actually then become bit known as the Jodhpur detainees. If you Google Jodhpur detainees, you can read a lot more about them as well. After the Nordjun. At this stage, despite there being a media blackout, news trickles through to the rest of Punjab and what's happened in um, in other parts. So I was actually in Punjab uh, four years ago now, um, and I managed to speak to a teacher in Gurdaspur, and he, he, he's kind of he was in his kind of late 40s, early 50s, and I asked him, you know, in 1984, were you there? Did you hear anything? Because Gurdaspur was 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 not far. Um, he, say, he said to me that on the 6th of June, he could hear the bombs that were going off in the bar side. And he was sent in Gurdaspur. So it just shows you the extent of the, of the battle that was raging. It wasn't just you know, the one day attack, it was a full on battle that they had with the in, 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 uh, Indian army. So what happens is then, as the news reaches the other Sikh across Punjab, the they then start uh, mutiny the army. 5,000, it is said, sick mutiny in the army after that. The Sikh regimental center used to be stationed within Punjab. But before, the, before they commenced the battle, they moved the Sikh regimental center out of Punjab. But the Bihari regiment center, that stayed in Bihar, the others still stayed within their states. Because again, they thought that perhaps they might bring reinforcements. Now, military, military experts have said that had the Sikh regiment center been stationed within Punjab, despite the fact that the Sikh within kept the army at bay, kept the tanks at bay for six days, had the Sikh regiment officers been in Punjab, the outcome of the battle could have been very different because the, re the reinforcements would have come. As a quote that I just wanted to share with you, and I think it just encapsulates so much. Had the militant Sikhs been equally armed, had their numerical strength been even one tenth of the Indian army, they would have pushed the army up to Delhi or even beyond Yamuna. That was the the kind of reality on the ground of what they were facing from the Sikh. Such, that, such was their, the, the ferocious response and resistance that they got from them. So let's look briefly towards the immediate aftermath. So within two years, the Sikh regroup they assassinate the Prime Minister, who was responsible for this. They assassinate the Chief of Army Staff, and they also take out uh, two perpetrators of the November Kalukara as well. They rebuild the Kaltat, this is all by 1986, and then in April 1986, from the Kaltat, 500, it said 500,000 Sikh half a million, despite there being a military curfew, then assembled at the Akal Takht, for Othe Akal Takht to Khalistan da Ilan Kita Jandaya. Now, now we, we can, we've had enough, we've, we've seen how India has treated us, and like I said, it wasn't just a handful of people, sometimes you know, we hear through Indian propaganda, but you're talking about half a million people. Just, and you can, again, you can Google these images, there are a lot more out in the open um, as well now, out, out in the public domain. This is just one of them, and you, you can have a, a, a read of that as well. Now briefly just turn, uh, turning our attention to the... So they, they simultaneously begin Operation Woodrow, Woodrow is it? This begins in 1984 and it continues for a decade, uh, until 90, over a decade, until 1995. And within that, it's a systematic genocide against the Sikh. Any Sikh aged between 15 and 35, with the fake encounters, 
as their blanket policy. They, they also introduce special laws specifically aimed at the Sikh and Punjab that gives them um, those extra judicial powers to do that. We are all quite familiar with uh, the Kulu Kulu that happens in November in 1924. That was actually codenamed uh, Operation Shanti. So that was their uh, all of the love were here that because they were going to plan the Sikh genocide for uh, November to commemorate the Gurgur of Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj. So what happens is Dr. Sangat Singh in his book details this and he says that Satwan Singh and the Yat Singh they find out about this Operation Shanti. So in an attempt to prevent the genocide, that's why they then assassinated Indra Gandhi as well. But as we know, it's just brought forward. And this, this kind of this theory, in this Operation Shanti, if you look at the way in which the genocide happens as well, the way that all the weapons are the same, and it happens overnight, and the way in which the, the mobs are attacking the city, it, it, it tells you that it was pre-planned, and it was orchestrated from the beginning. Operation Black Thunder, so that, the Sadat Khalsa in 1986, the day after the army go in, that is then called uh, Operation uh, Black Thunder, they go in again in 1988. So, Since 1947, um, they've also gone in four times as well, uh, the Indian government. And you know, we look towards the Shotaka Lukara and the Vodaka Lukara, we know approximately the Shotaka Lukara, uh, 20,000 uh, 20, Sikh were killed. And in the Vardaka Lukara, 50,000 approximately is what Ratan Singh Pangu gives us as a number. We still don't know what the figure is from the 80s and the 90s. You look at, you look at the independent human rights uh, reports, it's into the hundreds of thousands. You look at the work of Shahid Pai Kurwan, uh, just one Singh Khalra. You look at the work of Insaf. Recently, Punjab disappeared, also documented further cases. So we're still hearing about the, 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 how many were actually um, killed we don't have an actual answer. And lastly, I want to finish on the actual title of the, the talk over the past two weeks, Jang Hind Punjab. So I said at the beginning of last week that this Indo-Sikh confrontation begins in 1947, but that term, Jang Hind Punjab, somebody else used that as well 100 years before. A Punjabi poet, Shah Muhammad, uh, he uses that, and he uses it to describe the jang that the Sikh have with the Gore. So, but he describes it as jang in the Punjab, and the reason why he does that is because we all know Punjab was the last state to fall to the British. From the south, from Bombay, so by the states, by the time they get to um, 1846, after uh, Ranjit Singh passes on, they've got the, the full support of the rest of India. All the other forces from Bengal and from Rajasthan, they're all under the, under the British. So then he uses that term, Jang in Punjabi, Jang Udovi So hopefully you, you found the, the two weeks uh, informative. Um, and I wanted to, re to really concentrate today on the response that was given from the Sikh. You could go on for weeks about the actual genocide because there is so much information out there. And we do have a number of uh, handouts, so please help yourself. There's uh, a small booklet on the Delhi genocide, uh, which is worth picking up. And there's also a report that we published last year with uh, the Sikh Liberation Front in Canada. And that shows you how the, the machinery of the Indian state has worked against the Sikh following 1984. So over the past two weeks, if I, if I made any mistakes, uh, please forgive me. Why would you call Why would you keep something?